Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 211, building number sense without adding to your plate. Over the past few weeks, we've talked about the eight foundational number sense concepts, how to integrate them through activities like number strings, and how what you say and ask during these activities is what actually builds understanding. If you haven't watched any of these, I'll link them up in the description with this episode. Now, I know many of you have been thinking throughout this series, this all sounds great. I can see how important it is, but I'm already drowning. I have state standards to cover, curriculum pacing guides to follow, assessments to give, and a million other requirements. I can't add one more thing to my already overflowing plate. I hear you. I really do. And you're right. You can't add one more thing. But here's what I want you to consider. What if building number sense isn't about adding something? What if it's about changing how you use the time you already have? Because here's the truth. Spending time building number sense actually saves you time in the long run. And I often tell people as well that if it's not you, who? If it's not you that's going to make this a focus for your students, who's going to do it? Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. All right, so let me explain what I mean by spending time building number sense actually saves you time in the long run. When students do have a strong number sense, when they have those eight foundational concepts in place, everything else in math becomes easier. And I mean everything. Students with strong number sense learn new concepts faster. They make connections more quickly. They can apply strategies flexibly instead of getting stuck when the problem becomes hard or the numbers change. And you know what that means for you as a teacher? You spend less time reteaching, less time explaining the same concept five different ways or over and over again. You spend less time on intervention and remediation, less time feeling like you're banging your head against a wall, wondering why students aren't getting it, right? I learned this the hard way in my own classroom. But once I started focusing on building those foundations first, everything changed. Students didn't need me to reteach as much because they actually understood what was happening with numbers and they could figure out new problems because they had the conceptual understanding to think flexibly. Hint, that's why I call my course the flexibility formula because it helps kids think flexibly. So yes, I was spending 10 minutes a day on number sense activity, but I was saving time in the long run. The time you invest in building number sense compounds. It pays dividends all year long and year after year for the teachers to come as well. To help you with the overwhelm of thinking about adding one more thing to your plate, I've got a couple of strategies on how to try to fit this in without adding more time. So. A few episodes ago, our first strategy comes from episode 206. If you didn't watch that one, I'll link to it in the description. But I talked about the concept of making your math instruction just 1% better. And again, 1% better is like four to five minutes of your day. The idea is that you don't have to overhaul everything. You don't have to change your entire math block. You just need to focus on one small chunk of time, that four to five minutes, which again, is just 1% of your day and make that small chunk more about building mathematical thinking. If you haven't listened to episode 206, go listen to it. It's in the show notes, but it's a great foundation for what I'm talking about today. The whole episode is about changing just four to five minutes of your time and how that can make a huge difference for your students. So 
Take a look at your entire day though, not just math time, and see if there are five minutes that you could squeeze in just a few little minutes right here or there that you could work on number sense concepts, okay? Another way to approach number sense building is replace, don't add. So this is about identifying what you could stop doing and then replacing it with things that are maybe a little bit more effective. So things that maybe you could stop doing. Here's some suggestions. Stop giving worksheet warm-ups where students are just practicing procedures in isolation. Yeah, you know the ones where there's like 20 to 50 problems of the same type of calculation, like 20 subtraction or 20 multiplication problems, and kids are just solving them independently. You check them and then you just move on into the lesson. But what are students actually building during this time? Just the ab ability to follow a procedure? That's it. Or maybe some practice if they already know what they're doing. Uh, they're not developing number sense. They're not seeing relationships. They're not thinking flexibly. So another thing that you could stop giving is rote fact practice. This is like the old drill and kill type stuff, flashcards where students are just memorizing isolated facts without understanding the relationships between numbers. You can stop doing calendar time. That's just reciting the date and counting the days. If your calendar routine is just what's today's date, how many days have we been in school? Let's count by ones up to 25 because that's where we're at on our calendar. That's not building number sense at any level except counting and recognition of the digits. These activities aren't bad. They're just not the best use of your limited time. There is a time and place for them, but I feel like they are overused. There's so many activities that we do that are just mindless because we do them because it's just what we've always done. So I want you to stop and reflect about those and really feel like, are they the best things for my students at the moment? They might be the best thing here in a couple months. I don't know. That's for you to decide. You know your students better than me. I'm giving you some things to think about. So if you decide they're not the best use of your time, then let's start doing some number strings, number talks, quick images, just any activity where you can develop multiple number sense com concepts simultaneously and that they require students to really think and reason about numbers. So instead of the 20 problems on a worksheet that the kids solve independently, have them pick five from that same worksheet, but they have to pick five that have some kind of connection. Then you talk as a whole group about the relationships, about help making the connections and help your students build some understanding about numbers, not just mindlessly practicing. Uh, you can replace your rote fact practice with strategic fact practice. I'm not saying kids don't need practice, but let's be strategic about it. Instead of drilling random facts, choose facts that help students see patterns and relationships. Use dot patterns and 10 frames while they're doing this practice because that will help when, with subitizing and using their number relationships. You can transform your calendar time into number sense building time. Count by different numbers. Start from a different number when you're doing your count. Ask students to visualize the, the quantity and draw it. Make it all about developing relationships, not just writing and reciting numbers. The key here, is, again, is not to add. You're not adding in number sense activities, but you're going to take activities you're already doing and replace them with activities that intentionally build number sense. Same amount of time, just a better use of that time. So the beautiful thing about number sense activities is that they are really flexible. They can fit into lots of different places in your day. So depending upon how your school is set up and how your classroom is structured, some teachers choose to do number routines as math warmups at the beginning of their math block. Some teachers will use them during morning meeting or calendar time. Some teachers use them as transition activities. Like you got five minutes before you head to lunch, pull out some subitizing cards and do quick images with your students. Some teachers integrate them into the math centers that they have or station rotations. The point is you're not looking for extra time. You're looking at the time you already have and asking, could I squeeze a number sense activity in here? 
or where could I replace something with something that builds number sense? And here's the thing. Remember, once you understand these eight number sense concepts and what they look like, you're going to start to see them everywhere. You will see opportunities to, to integrate them all the time. You'll see something and you're like, oh, I could turn this into a great counting activity or into something that spil- builds spatial relationships. I could adjust this center and focus on part, part, whole thinking. You're going to become more intentional about every minute of your math instruction. Let me share something that a teacher who went through the flexibility formula course sent to me. This is Linda, a first grade teacher, and here's what she said. I've been doing lots of subitizing activities in the classroom, but I feel as though I haven't been providing my students with enough opportunities to compare and contrast various visual images of number. The visual slides provided in the flexibility formula offer a way for me to better integrate spatial reasoning into the experience of number sense that I was providing for my students. I carefully chose the spatial reasoning activity so that these experiences help children to build the other three number relationships of one, two, more or less, benchmarks of five and 10 and part, part, whole. Do you hear what Linda was saying? She was already doing subitizing activities. She was already spending the time, but the course helped her understand how to make those activities more intentional, how to choose activities strategically, how to integrate the concepts together. She didn't add more time. She just made better use of the time she already had. And that's what's possible for you too. Imagine it's three months from now and you've been doing 10 minutes of intentional number sense work every single day not just as something extra, but as a replacement for activities you were doing before. Your students are gonna start to think more flexibly. They're seeing relationships between numbers. They're not getting stuck on problems just because the numbers change. And they're actually enjoying math because it makes sense to them. And you're enjoying it too, right? For you, you're spending less time reteaching, less time frustrated, less time wondering why they're not getting it because now they finally are getting it because you've built the foundation that they need. That's what's possible when you use your time strategically. So here's how I wanna help you make this shift because understanding that you need to replace activities is one thing, but knowing which activities to use and how to facilitate them, that's an entirely different thing. And this is where having a clear system makes all the difference. And if you didn't hear it last in the last episode, we have two options for you. The 10 day number sense kickstart is $19. And this is if you're just thinking, I need a place to start. I need some actionable things that I can try out and get started with number sense. Well, the kickstart is perfect for that. You get 10 days of small tweaks you can do in your classroom to get started. Technically it's 10 videos and resources that are meant for you to watch one a day, but you can binge watch all of them as soon as you enroll. In the videos, you get the basics of what you need to start replacing less effective activities with more intentional number sense work. This is your quick start. It's just a little kickstart. It's your way to dip your toes in and make some small changes without a huge investment of time or money. The flexibility formula course, this is your deep dive. If you're thinking that you wanna truly transform your math instruction, You want to understand these concepts deeply so that you can make strategic decisions about what to do and when, then the flexibility formula is the right choice for you. In the course, you're going to get a deep understanding of all eight number sense concepts for the specific grade bands and what they look like at the different developmental levels. You'll get a comprehensive library of activities and resources like the spatial reasoning slides that Linda mentioned in her text that she sent to me. Uh, You'll get assessment tools so that you know exactly where each student is in their development and you get support for connecting this work to your required curriculum. Now, I'm not specific about curriculums. So it's more general how to take this and, and integrate with the textbook that you're currently using. The course does not tell you exactly when in your day to do these activities or when in your school year, because every school and classroom is different. What it does do is help you understand the concepts so well 
that you can make these decisions. You become the expert in your own classroom. You can look at your schedule and your students' needs and make strategic choices about where and how to integrate this work. It gives you the knowledge and resources to transform how you teach math, not just give you a script to follow. So here's how you make the choice between Kickstart or the full flexibility formula. Choose the Kickstart if you're new to this way of thinking about math and you just want small changes to try out in your classroom. You're looking for just the basics to get you moving in the right direction. Choose the flexibility formula course if you want to deeply understand these concepts so that you can make strategic instructional decisions. You want a comprehensive library of resources and activities to pull from all year long. You're ready to really transform your approach to math instruction so that there is a focus on building number sense and you want assessment tools so you can track student progress and know what to focus on next. Both will help you use your time better. Both will help you replace less effective activities with more intentional number sense work. The question is, how deep do you want to go? Here's again what I want you to do right now, whether you take a course or the, or the number sense kickstart. First, think about your typical math day. Where are, you spend, where are you spending time on activities that aren't building number sense? What could you replace? Is it your warm up routine, your fact practice, your calendar time, your center activities? Identify just one thing that you could replace. One activity that's taking up time, but not building these foundational concepts. And then if you want to go deeper and you want help with these ideas, then choose one of these options to learn more. You can go to buildmathminds.com slash 10 day dash kickstart for the 10 day number sense kickstart. If you want to just dip your toes in or go to buildmathminds.com slash enroll for the flexibility formula course, if you're ready to just dive right in to building number sense with your students and you want the complete system. Remember there is one course that's for pre-K to second grade teachers and one that's for third through fifth grade. So choose the right one for your students. And if you do both, I suggest starting with third through fifth grade. So don't wait until next month or until summer break or even until next school year to make this shift in your teaching. Your students need these foundations now. Remember, you don't have to find extra time. You just have to make small tweaks in the activities you're already doing and in the questions you are asking, and I can help you do that. It starts with making one small change, replacing one activity, using five to 10 minutes differently. And if you want support in making that change, if you want the activities, the examples, the resources, I've got you. The Kickstart and the Flexibility Formula course are both there they're ready for you. I'm going to put the links to both over at the show notes. And again, that's buildmathminds.com slash 211. Thank you for joining me for this series. This is the last one on building math fluency. We've covered the eight foundational concepts, how to integrate them together using one activity, how to facilitate those activities effectively, and how to fit it all in without adding more to your plate. Now is the time to take action with these ideas. Pick your path, number sense kickstart or the flexibility formula, and let's get your students thinking flexibly about numbers. Until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep building math minds. <laughs> <laughs>